Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about CSS Clip Path. The CSS Clip Path is going to cut our CSS boxes. So we have an image, fix.jpg. So let's grab that image. Uh, I did mention CSS Clip Path in one of the previous lectures, but uh, in this lecture we're going to take a look at it. So if you want to cut your image or your box in any way, like uh, this applies so I'm going to give you a real world example. You have an image and there are like white spaces on the sides of it, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your image, you're going to grab a pair of scissors and you're going to start cutting that white spaces out. Clip path is going to do the same thing in the CSS world. And I'm going to give it a height of um, 500 pixels, a width of 750 pixels. Uh, let me just decrease this a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to give it an object fit cover. There we go. So in here, uh, the name of the um, property is clip path. And there is a lot of different iterations of it. I'm not going to dive very deep into it. We're just going to cover polygon, which basically states that you're going to provide two points. The first point is going, you're going to put, put, put um, what was that? <laughs> you are going to provide a set of coordinates, x and y. The first value is x, the second value is y. So as many cuts as you want, those many points you have to provide. Those many pairs of coordinates you have to provide. So let's say I want to start the cut at 70% in the x direction and 0% in the y direction. Where is that? It's right about here. Then you're going to provide a comma, then provide another value. And then I want to provide the second point at 100% in the X direction and 50% in the Y direction. Where is that point? Where is X 100%? So if on this, on the left side of the image, X is zero, then of course, on the right side of the image, X is 100. When it is 100, so X is right here. So we are talking about the right side of this image. And it says y is 50%. So if y on the top is 0%, on the bottom it's 100%, and the middle is 50. So x 100% is right here, y 50% is right here. So we are going to cut the image from 70%, which is right here. I, ho I hope you can see the cursor right here, all the way to right here, like that. And then uh, I'm going to provide some more points. The next point is going to be X 100%. Again, Y 100%. It means after we have cut this, this corner top right, we are going to move down. So X is one at this point, bottom right of the image, X is 100, Y is 100. Because we are on the right and on the bottom. Now, you need to close this image. Keep that in mind. You need to close that cutting. It's not like scissor, like freehand cutting. You need, when you start this clip path, you need to close it all the way to the, first L, to the first point. Now, where is the next point? The next point is right here, bottom left. So in the bottom left, X is zero because X has not moved any from the left. And Y is 100%. There is something that you need to keep in mind that the pivot for CSS is top left corner. So in the top left corner, X is zero, Y is zero. Top left corner, that is the pivot for CSS. You need to keep that in mind. So in the bottom left corner, X is still zero because we have not moved from the left side of the screen. So 0%. What about Y? Y is all the way to the down, to the bottom of the image, so 100%. And finally, we are going to close the image to here, which is top left, the pivot, where both X and Y are 0, 0. For 0, you do not need to provide a percentage. So it is just going to cut the top right corner of this image. Save that. Uh, I did mess something up in here. Save that, there we go. So the top right corner has been cut. I'm going to give you one more example and then we are done. Uh, there is a tool uh, that I'm going to give it to you. First, I need to search for it. 
Uh, it is Bennett Feely. So Bennett uh, Feely. It uh, this guy has created this clip path a uh, maker, which is going to uh, allow you to understand better this clip path. So here is the web page. I'm gonna go full screen. So you can see that you have, and you can get the CSS code from it. So if you want to create a triangle, this is the points. You can study it by yourself. You can create, for example, like arrows, like this. You can create this image for, this is an, sort of an octagon. This is bevel, rab, rabbit, octagon, heptagon. Then we have hexagon. Heptagon is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven hepta. Hexagon, pentagon, pentagon USA, triangle, tra trapezoid, I think, parallelogram. This is what I'm going to show you how you can create and rhombus. Perfect. So this I am going to give you the clip, uh, the um, uh, URL. I'm just going to put it right here. You can go crazy with it. So clip path, let's create that. Uh, what was it? Uh, parallelogram. <laughs> Polygon. Polygon. And I'm going to explain it to you. So let's see what is the first point that we want to start. The first point that we want to start is going to be right here. So we are going to create a parallelogram. Pala parallelogram. I think parallelogram, right? Not parallelogram. So, uh, so I, x is going to be thirty percent. So I'm going to start from here. Y at this point is zero. So thirty percent and zero. Then I'm going to move in the y in the x direction. So from thirty percent all the way to seventy five percent, I'm going to cut it. Seventy five percent, and y is still zero because we are on the top of the image. Then uh, x is going to go to one hundred. And y is going to be 0. So x is going to be 100 and y is going to be 0. After that, I want to cut to x 61%, uh, which is all the way to here. This almost, this is 61. But y is going to be 100, which means that we are going to cut to here. So we started from here, go, gone to here, to there. From there, we're going to cut to here. So we have 61% for X, 100% for Y. I'm sure you're getting what I'm saying. And then X is going to be zero and Y is going to be 100. Eventually, uh, again, X is going to be zero and Y is going to be 100. Save that and then we are, we are going to end up with this image. So we have one, two, three, four, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six points where we where we cut from the image, and then we end up with this parallelogram. Parallelogram, not parallel. So we cut this part from the image, and we cut this part from the image, and we ended up with this one. That's it for this lecture. I think uh, this is a little bit crooked. So uh, sixty-one percent for X. Is right here let's set it to 75 percent yeah much better much better uh, with this our lecture comes to an end uh, so does the entire CSS essentials course so we are done with the HTML5 elements course and we are also done with the CSS3 essentials course we have talked about a lot of stuff there is a lot of hours for these courses um, and uh, I try to um, can try to cover the most relevant HTML elements and CSS3 properties. The reason that I try to cover these is because we are going to create four full stack web applications, two with Flask and two with Django, what Python web frameworks. But Flask and Django, both of them are Python web frameworks. So. And those, um, we are going to work or interact with HTML and CSS in one way or the other. And I just wanted to provide you two essential courses, two essential trainings for HTML5 and CSS3. So whenever we get to those projects, it's going to be uh, like that. I'm going to assume that you know what I'm trying to write there, what I'm trying to 
uh, do. So I wouldn't have to explain as much. I would. I will definitely explain the HTML elements and CSS3 properties, but not as much because we have already talked about all of the properties and so many more properties that we will never cover in those projects. So you need to have that idea. When you're learning Python, one of the most important um, uh, applications of Python is backend web development. And whenever you're working with backend, uh, it is considered a best practice to learn about the front end as well. Because in one way or another, you will be interacting with HTML5 and CSS3, so it's a better idea to learn it. And in comparison with Python, these two technologies are very, very simple. So when you're learning like a whole programming language, there is logic, there is there are like data types, there is functions, there is... Um, um, you have object-oriented paradigm. There is nothing of that sort in HTML and CSS. There is just very simple HTML elements and very simple CSS uh, properties. So in comparison to Python, this is a piece of cake in order to learn it. So you don't have to really put too much effort even into it uh, to just learn it. But if you learn it, it's better because you need to know what it is that you're working with. We are going to interact with HTML5 forms. You need to know what a form is, how it is submitted. And the reason that you need to do, know that is because when you have a full stack application like Facebook, you can see on the front of it, there is all HTML and CSS. So when, when you're trying to make a post, create a post, what you're actually doing is the part of the database which is dedicated to your profile is going to change. So you need to know what data has been inserted and how you can grab that data, that post, and store it within the database. Because mostly, 100% of the times, you will not have the same data in the form that you're trying to fill out in the front end or the post that you're trying to write and grab exactly that data and store it in the database. You're going to have to do some processing, some cleaning the data up. So that part is very crucial. You have to know where your data is coming from. When you know where it is coming from, you're, you will be able to uh, process it, clean it up, and then store it within the database. Therefore, you have to know about HTML and CSS. It's crucial. JavaScript, you could say it's like arbitrary. If you know it, it's like very good thing it's if you know JavaScript as well, but it's not that crucial. When you're a backend developer, Python backend developer, and you're working with HTML and CSS, it's, uh, it's not, I would say it's very important. It's, a, it's like uh, the language that can compete with Python, JavaScript and Python, they go hand in hand. They're very, very strong programming languages very powerful, very high paying jobs, very in demand, of course, very in demand. But when you're getting started, it's not that crucial to learn JavaScript as well. But as you're developing, you should have a sense of what JavaScript is. So you, have, you should have like, you should have watched like an essentials course for JavaScript, like, like, like in the range of like six to eight hours course. So you have this idea, okay, what JavaScript is, what is asynchronous programming, how the web interacts with the server. So with this, our lecture comes to an end, and this entire series is going to end. In the next one, you, you're going to have your first uh, full-stack multi-page web application, which is an animal trivia application, which is the application that I created for my JavaScript course, and I'm, I have created that for this course as well just to make to show you that whatever you can do with JavaScript, you can do with Python as well. And whatever you can do with Python, you can do with JS as well. So it's like, that's why these two languages are like the most powerful languages out there. No other language can come even close. So see you in the next uh, chapter, see you in the next section where you're going to enjoy your first full stack multi-page web application.